It's been a while. It's actually been. Oh shoot, where's my phone? Hold on. It has been exactly one year. That is about 365 days. And 140. Okay guys, so in this video we're actually gonna be remaking something that's already been made. But I'm gonna make it a different way that does not damage your stuff. The guy who originally made this, the link will be in the description if you want to see the original video. You might be wondering, what are we going to make? I'm wondering this too. Okay guys, we are going to be making a screaming Roomba that when it runs into the wall, it screams. For this project, you will need a battery. You also need a Raspberry Pi, preferably with a Wi-Fi module. A speaker that has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack cable. You need a breadboard. I have this little bridge that connects to my Raspberry Pi to make it easier to wire up. Some jumper cables. A push button. A cord to power your Raspberry Pi. And a Roomba. And that is all you need to build this. Okay, the first step is to plug in your Raspberry Pi. I'm just using the wall adapter because I don't want to wear down my battery, but you could use it if you wanted. So plug that in. And then on your Raspberry Pi, there should be a little port. It doesn't matter what Pi you're using as long as you're running the OS Raspbian. Also, keep in mind, before you set this up, you should have your OS set up and SSH set up or be plugged into a monitor. Okay, next I'm going to wire up the circuit. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your button. You're going to want to put it on your board. I'll zoom into this in just a second like this. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hook up one of your leads to the 18th terminal on mine. It's on here. Otherwise you have to look up the schematic for the GPIO pins. And then you're going to want to hook up your other wire to the ground. While you're here, I'd also hook up your jack to the 3.5 millimeter jack in your Raspberry Pi and plug it in to your speaker. The very first thing you want to do is type in sudo. That's telling the computer that we want admin uh, access. So sudo raspi, so that stands for Raspberry Pi dash config. So this is going to bring you to this menu. What you're going to want to do is go to advanced options, go to audio, and then for this, type in your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This will make it so then the sound is outputted to the headphone jack. And then click finish. Okay, now that we are in the Raspberry Pi, we need to record some sounds for our robot. So what you want to do is you want to plug in a USB microphone to your Raspberry Pi. And to see if it detects it, you need to type in A R E. C O R D space dash L. And right now I don't have anything plugged into it, but you should see your microphone if it's plugged in. Okay, the next thing you need to type in is A R E C O R D, A record. So dash uppercase D, then you're going to do H W, then you're going to do colon, one comma zero space dash D. And then right here, you're going to put the duration that you want to put it in. So if you want to record for 10 seconds, you'll have 10, 5 seconds, 4 seconds, whatever. And then, so uh, I'm just going to type in 90. Don't do that long, though. And then dash F, and then CD, and you're going to name it. So if we want to do um, sound dot, and you have to put the file extension. So if you want wave or MP3, you can put that. And then dash C, and then 1 and then click enter and start recording. Okay, to test your file, you want to type in a play and then space your file name. So in this case, I have one name sre.mp3. And as you can hear in the background, that is the sound playing. Okay, now that we have recorded our sounds, we can start writing our script for it. So what you're going to write is sudo. Oh wait, you have to click on it. sudo nano or yeah. Nano is the text editor and then you're gonna put, I already have one, but you're gonna put your name of your file dot py. py is very important because that is the name of, that's the file extension for Python. 
So I'm not going to rewrite this, but I'm going to go through it real quickly. So this import, these are just telling the computer that it needs to get these Im these integrated classes from Python. So this is getting, um, this is letting the computer access the GPIO pins, letting it know what time is, letting it execute commands, and letting it get a random number. And then down here in GPIO setup mode, or set mode, this is basically setting up the pin layout of the pins. Um, in this case, it's called BCM. This is setting up the pin 18, telling it that it's an input. This X is what the random variable is changing, so depending on the value is what uh, sound it will play. Done, this is to make sure that the while loop doesn't keep on going after it's already played one. So then you have to put this in a try statement because sometimes it doesn't work. Um, and then this is while true, so this is a loop. So this is button state. So this is basically just telling that pin 18 is an input pin. This is saying if the button is pushed, done 1 is equal to 1. So it's setting done 1 to 1. Then it's going to choose a random number for x. So if x is equal to 1, and if done is equal to 1, it's going to do, it's going to play the sound, and then it's going to set done to equal to 2. So that will close out of this, won't let this do any more, or no, close out of this one, and then it won't let it do any more, and it will repeat itself, and once it gets pushed again. That basically just gets repeated for all of these, and then time.sleep, this is to let it uh, buffer so you're not just keep on going as fast as you can, um, because otherwise that slows it down. This is in case of an error, it's going to do GPIO cleanup. That makes it, also, if you close it, it's going to do GPIO cleanup. That means that you can reuse your GPIO pins now, and they're open, accessible from all programs. And that is basically it for the code. You can also do what I did and have a startup class. So when the thing, when the thing is powered on, you just type in this command and it starts it all. So what you do is you do sudo nano, because we're making another one, and I did, I named it start.py. So this is basically all it is. I just imported OS and it can run commands. Um, you're going to have to run this command to set the, this is basically setting the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to 100% volume. And this one is just running our script. So basically that's all that does. So now we're basically done in the setup end. Whenever you want to run your program, all you have to do is type in sudo python, oops, python start.py or whatever the name is. So if we were trying to run the other one, you do room.py. You click enter. It says it changed it to full power. And then when I go click the button, it will play a sound. But right now I'm not near it. But I'll show that in just a second. And then if you say if you want to stop the program, you click Control X or no Control Z, and then it stops the program. That's about all of it for the software end. Now let's head over and how do we rig it up on the Roomba? So basically what I'm doing here is you can see all the parts that I have to use to put it together. So I have the Raspberry Pi with the circuit and I have some 3D printed cubes, the battery, some scotch tape, and the speaker. So right now I'm kind of just positioning, I'm putting some tape on the Pi so then I can stick it to the Roomba so that it doesn't fall off when it's moving on the bottom. And I'm going to be sticking the push button behind the IR sensor on the very top of the bumper. So when the bumper gets hit, it pushes the push button. This is going to be our triggering system, rather than tapping into the sensor that's already there. So as you can see, I'm using the ribbon cable to my advantage because it's kind of tight. So it'll push up against it on the IR sensor. I think that's IR at least. And then, see, I'm putting it there, and I'm putting the 3D printed cubes, so then when it pushes back, it doesn't just push the breadboard back, it pushes on the pie, but the pie is taped down. So, this is using minimal amount of tape. As you can see, you'll want to push the Raspberry Pi as far up as you can, so you have the most tension on the button. See, once you have it like that, when you push the bumper, it should push the button. 
And now I'm going to be connecting the battery to the Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, there's the cable. I'm going to be connecting it. Let's see, there we go. So now it's connected. Now I just need to put the battery in. And then it should pretty much be good to go. I can SSH into it to start the command and call it good.